going to give you some classic closing ways. Number one is the assumption close. I use this all the time. I assume everyone's going to buy from me. I just write up the order. I say, fuck it. I'm going for it. Hang on. Who cares? I'm assuming that you're going to buy it because I actually operate in a principle of faith. I can't understand why you wouldn't buy it from me. So that's the assumption close. The alternative close is a classic technique that has been used. John, when would you like us to start the project? Monday or Tuesday? Alternative, Tuesday. Guess what? You just got the sale. Shut up. What time would you like us to start? Two or three? When would you like to book that job in? Tuesday or Wednesday? Says Wednesday, you got the job. Alternative, how would you like to pay for that cash or credit? Alternative. Next one is return serve. Customer says, um, Tony, could I get that booked in next Wednesday? Your response is, would you like it next Wednesday? Customer says, yes, you got the sale. When can we get installed? When would you like it installed, John? Wednesday, yeah, I think we can fit that in. Let me see what we can do. That's called the return serve. The no rush close is a classic technique that could potentially be used on a dove and it also could be used on an eagle. John, and you've got to be honest with this particular area, but scarcity does work. John, okay, there's no rush. And then the next day, or even then, you ring him up and say, look, John, I know there's no rush, but I just wanted to highlight something to you. If you decided to go ahead with this um, and you don't make the decision within the next week, I'm not trying to pressure you, there may be the challenge that we've so flat out at the moment, we've got so much work on, we will probably have difficulty scheduling this within your time frames. Um, and, and, and can I ask you one thing? If you're in business, you're always busy. Never say to anybody, we've got no clients. Never say to you, we've got so much time. Uh, you can choose any day you want because we've got nothing on. What does that say to a customer? Absolutely. Yeah? Busy people get booked. Good people get booked. Good businesses get booked. Special offer close is the tactic of, hey, I can sharpen the pencil, but I need to put a parameter around the time. I need to get a decision within the next 24 hours. So that's special offer. Next technique that you might even consider that wouldn't stop you. I've done this countless times. Let's just say I'm Andy. Andy, I know he's a big shot. Okay, he's got lots of money. He's a really cool guy. Um, hitter, smashes it out of the park all the time. Great business entrepreneur, smashes it. He says, I, I want a lower price. I might even look at him and say, mate, that wouldn't stop you. Here's what I'd say to him, mate, you got shitloads of money. And he smiles at me and says, yeah, I know. <laughs> and he goes, man, okay, forget all that. That's crap, mate. You can make it in five minutes, mate. And he goes, yeah, you're right. It's like honouring, isn't it? That wouldn't stop you. You can afford it, clothes is exactly the same. Mate, this is nothing, mate. I've just seen your cars, mate. This is like one tyre on one of those cars. <laughs> ah, mate, it's a gutsy one. Leave them alone, clothes. Leave them alone, clothes is a classic closing technique. Husband and wife. Now, you know they're doves, right? You know they're doves, okay? And you don't want to go back there next day. So what you do is you say to them, hey, guys, guys, I just really think it would be really cool if I just stepped outside for a couple of minutes and really, why don't you guys just talk about it between yourselves and I'll come back in about 10 minutes. Because I, I, I think you need to talk about it because, you know, because they're doves and you need to be unified. You need to make sure this is okay. So what I'd like to do is come back in, in five minutes. I'm just going to make a few phone calls. So I'll go out to my van, make a few phone calls, 
And I'll come back in five minutes just to get your decision. Certainly would like to work with you, um, but it's got to be right for both parties. That's leave them alone close, but don't leave them too far away. Another one is the for and against close. Um, it can work for you. Um, works really well on an owl um, and certainly has been around for a long time. Um, it's when I get my most powerful form of sales tools ever, which is a blank bit of paper. And on the blank bit of paper, all that I do is I say, John, just want to do a bit of an exercise. Let's just get a bit of paper and put a line and let's put the reasons why we should potentially go ahead with this. And just, just help him. Just sort of say, well, first of all, you're going to save money. Great. You need it. It's going to enhance the house. Give him all the reasons. Work together. And then you say to him, because it's a bit of an owl, and you say, just to be really fair, let's just talk about the reasons why you shouldn't do this. Because, you know, we're on both sides of the ledger. Now, here's the key. You've got to shut up here. <laughs> Suddenly, you become incredibly silent. It's almost like, man, I'm so... Man, it's like, man, you can only pull out one. Now, on this side, you've got seven. On this side, you've got one. And all you have to say is, the numbers tell the story. Real logical shit. It's like a mini feasibility study on the fly. And they go, yeah. That works on an owl. They like all that crap. It's like, man, a little mini feasibility. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Got it, got it, got it. And you can do that on the fly. You, don't, you want to do a lot of this stuff on the fly? Like, I, I know every diagram, but I don't present them. I just draw them on the board and say, wow, that's on the fly stuff. So that works really well. Um, another one. Ooh, dumb mistake clothes. Ooh, hooly dooly, I could use this one a lot. You can't say the customer they're dumb. But you, you have got these amazing war stories of other customers who made the wrong decision. And occasionally you pull out a great graphical story of how someone else screwed it up. And you tell a war story, someone who got it wrong. That would be another one. Minor point close, um, classic technique. I'll show you how they use it in cars. Brand new car, you look at the brand new car, the car dealer goes, what colour upholstery do you want it in? Black or grey or, you know, the upholstery. You want it leather or vinyl? You go leather. You've just bought the bloody car. What they do is they close you on a minor point to actually close the entire sale. Even though you've got the money, you don't like here 60000 so they get you on a minor point. I'm going to give you two more. And I'll send these across to Angela. Because these two are incredibly important. Um, if you've tried everything, 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 and you're at that point of total desperation, you try the final objection close. And in order for this to work, you have to accept that you've lost. So I ring up Andy. And I say, Andy, I've been speaking to you. I can clearly see that you're not going to go ahead with us. I can see that. You've decided to go somewhere else. And that's OK. Just because I'm learning, and I'm always trying to improve, can you help me? Was it something that we did wrong? And Andy, for the first time ever, who never tells me because he's an eagle, puts down his guard. He says, ah, Qatari, it wasn't you. Just your pricing was too expensive. I never knew that because he never told me that. But I had to lay it down. I had to surrender it. I had to appear defeated with genuine puppy dog eyes watering up, saying, please help me, Andy. And Andy says, ah, oh, well, may as well help you. And I appear defeated. He tells me the truth. And then magically I come back in. I go, so what are you telling me, Andy? It's price. Yeah. 
I, I know you've told me that. I know I've accepted it. But you reckon there's any way I can come back in the game? Because if that's the case, let me see what I can do. And then he goes, okay. So I appear defeated. I release the pressure. I get them to narrow it down to one objection. He's told me the true objection. Never heard it before. A lot of people won't tell you the true objection. And I overcome that objection. Now I'm going to give you the last one, which I know that you'll get. In a domestic situation, you have this amazing situation of husband and wife. And it's weird stuff. And you sometimes don't have to sell to both of them. You only have to sell to one of them. Because if you are married, you understand it's called happy wife, happy life. It's truly. And, and, and I'll share a true story of what happened to me. Um, when my wife uh, was on her 40th birthday, she wanted to, me to buy her a diamond ring. And she's married. Um, she's born on January the 8th. So we suggested that we would buy that diamond ring around that time frame when there were sales. And it was quite a sizable purchase. And we had just started the business, so we didn't have a whole lot of money. Um, and prior to that, prior to that, we actually then, um, prior to that, about nine months prior to that, we decided we were living in Sydney. We would go to Melbourne and for a weekend away without the children. So, you know, the weekend away, you know, no kids, great time, happy times, married, you know what I'm talking about, no kids, fantastic. <laughs> now, because we were looking for a deal, um, we decided there was a new um, part of the Crown Casino that it opened called the Crown Promenade. And it was a good rate, so we decided to stay at the Crown Promenade. And, you know, you get there and you, you know, you sort of arrive on a Friday afternoon and naturally they give you the newspaper, which is the Herald Sun. And as we were, my wife is looking at the Herald Sun, she noticed a full page advertisement for a jewellery sale in the same complex that we were at because casinos are incredibly secure places. So they've got great security. So if you're going to do a jewellery sale, this would be the ideal place to have it. And it was starting Saturday morning, and, and she said to me, you know, do you mind if we just have a look? And here's what she said. I know that we can't buy. I know that we have no money. I know that. I don't want to buy. I just want to have a look around. And I'm figuring, happy wife, happy life. You know, I'm figuring, yeah, cool, no worries, smack it out. So I said, we'll go in the morning. Okay, um, and we'll go after breakfast. Now, after breakfast, we go down, and these guys are shit-hot pros. Mate, mate, as a sales trainer, you know when people are doing the art well. You go, oh, wow, I should be taking notes of these guys. <laughs> and I go in there, and, and first of all, they've got this all scoped out. They've got a, like a man cave because they're figuring husbands are coming. They don't want to be there, so we've got to entertain the husbands. So there's a whole place with, you know, Playstations and DVDs and magazines. And in my stupidity, I say to Ingrid, take as long as you want. <laughs> First mistake. I go to my cave with the other blokes. Now, in about 10 minutes, Ingrid comes to me and she says, Tony, I'm quite excited. She says, Tony, um, you know, just... Come with me and I want to show you what the style I like. And I'm going, oh, okay. And I said, but honey, we're not going to buy. And, and so she goes away and she's it's not going to buy. We can do that in January. You know, you just have a look around. I like reading my newspaper. And so she, the first attack is, is sort of like, and I defend the first attack. But then I get second wave. Second wave comes in about 10 minutes later on. She says, but honey, I just want you to have a look. And I'm going, happy, happy wife, happy life, away from the kids, weekend, make it blissful, okay, do what she wants to do, be the loving, caring husband, spend time doing what she wants to do. Okay, I can do this. And I'm really reluctant going up to the counter. I'm not even eyeballing the salesperson. Right? I'm standing behind my wife and she's communicating to me because I'm not going to get sucked into this vortex. I know what you suckers are trying to do. You're trying to draw me in. 
we got no money and I'm telling you, I'm working my butt out and we're not going to buy a diamond ring right now. No way, no way. I've said January, we're doing January. We're nine months premature, the baby's not ready to be born. We haven't even just conceived yet, so let's just wait. So I do that. So she looks at, I look at the counter, I'm really reluctant, distant, she's showing to me. About 10 minutes, I go back to my cave. Then in about 10 minutes' time, she comes to me and says, I've just spoken to the owners. Did you know that these people aren't retailers? They're actually wholesalers who are selling retail. They normally sell their diamonds to retailers. We are going to get the same price that retailers buy at. And I'm going, uh, okay. And then I say in my typical way, but, but honey, um, first of all, uh, in January, everyone's on sale. So I reckon we can always get a deal because everyone's always on sale. So it, it's not you have to buy it now. And then I said to her, but also, and I reminded her of agreement, like we don't physically have the money. So I sort of, the third wave came and, and I defended, but I'm the arm is starting to chink. I, I can see the bridge has been broken. Remember the salesperson's ever spoken to me once here. Fourth time, she comes back and she says, what about the Amex? <laughs> and I go, but we have to pay it back. It's getting weaker and weaker. I'm becoming feeble here. I'm getting a bit frustrated because there's constant, constant attacks. And then she comes back again and she calculates the amount of frequent flyer points that we would get if we purchased it because her logic is we would get a free holiday to New Zealand where she's from. Now that's the last attempt. The next attempt is the last attempt. There's no one left there, so she can be quite vocal. She walks in and storms in and says, I don't get this, Tony. Every time you want to buy something, you just buy it. You don't even tell me what you buy. I don't even know what you buy. You buy your golf clubs, they just turn up. I don't know, you don't ask me to buy them, right? And the first time I want something, I can't get it. I have given birth to two of your children. The last one took 12 hours. I deserve this. Who, who here believes that I bought the product? Why did I buy the product? Because it is the ultimate closing technique called divide and conquer. Divide and conquer means that if I have a couple like Angela and a Andrew, and Andrew is a bit negative, and Angela is super passionate and positive, and let's do this, I'm not going to even speak to Andrew. I'm just going to go through Angela. I'm just going to rip Angela out, and I'm going to get Angela to use every device that she knows on Andy to get him over the line. And I'm going to say, hey, what concerns me? I understand that Andy wants to be reluctant on this, but, but Angela, I think you're going to miss out. And Angela will go, oh, I can't miss out. I'll go and speak to Andy. That's the technique. The technique is you don't have to sell to both of them. You just have to find the one who is really excited about the product, really excited about the solution, and just unlock, unload, and get them directed and say, go and get your husband and stitch them up because you have sex on your sites. <laughs> And it's brilliant. <laughs> so I've given you some amazing closing techniques there. Um, we will send them across to you. There are many, many more. I just want to give you an understanding that in many ways, dealing with customers is not about product. It's more about psychology. You're actually playing a game of chess. And if you want to, play the, you want to be brilliant at this, it's really fun to work out how to play the chess better. The joy that I have is not in selling anymore. The joy is how to play the game better. The fun that I have is, what could I have done better there? And here's the greatest single thing that you need to do. When you don't get a sale, don't get shitty. Ask yourself the deep question, what could we have done better? Because if you ask the right question, you'll get the right answer. So in summary, there were basically seven closing strategies that I went through. 
Stack the value, restate your case. Simple, easy doozy. Restate the case, summarize exactly the benefits are. Number two, do you agree? Get them to say yes. Do you agree this is the right solution? Do you agree we are the best? Number three, conditional. If we need to do this, this is what has to happen next. This is stage one, stage two, stage three. Four, future commit to meet your time frames, to get this done before Christmas, to get this done before the holidays, to get this done before your relatives come across, to get this done before the renovations, to get this done before the painter comes in, to get this done because of this. This is what we need to do. We need to map this out. Number four, to get this started. Okay, we'll do stage one, stage two. We won't put too much pressure on. You can stop at stage one, it's okay. It's still a solution. Don't go for the big thing. Just start inch by inch, it's a cinch. Just start the journey. Direct, what would you like for me to go ahead? Just the assumption close that we talked about. And um, the assumption one is I'm really looking forward to working with you. I'm really looking forward to partnering with you. I'm really looking forward to working on this project with you. This will be fantastic.